So to tell you the story, I have got about 28, 26 probably acres set up for breeding puppies. So I've paddocked that, uh, I've got little sheds in there, the normal puppy stuff. And anyone that knows the game will know that to set up for pups is quite expensive. And to do them properly, feeding, worming, medical, uh, staff, everything, I would say it cost me about three thousand pound approximately, slightly more, to get them to the track, if I could get them to the track. So my British bred pups, which are well bred uh, and can run, can't get to the track because Arc Racing have published a notice to me, which you probably have read, in relation to me running at their tracks, Nottingham. Perry Bar, Sunderland and Newcastle. Is this right for Art to stop me running at their tracks? Well, yeah, they can stop me going to their tracks because obviously they don't like what I do for a job. And because I have found a little bit of a niche, a loophole, in order to use unmanned aerial vehicles or drones to watch their races at their 19 courses or whatever, how many they've co uh, race courses they've got, they're not happy with that. But should they treat them dogs or my staff badly because of this? Well, I would say no, they've got no right really. And in 2021, I think it's a fucking disgrace. Why is it a disgrace? Well, the welfare of them dogs are being affected. That's, that's the bottom line. And this is all about welfare. And with the status of British breeding the way it is, we're, 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 in, a bit of a, we're in a bit of a fight because the letters that are getting bred, the people that want to breed now, are getting few and far between. And it's not only that there, and this is no disrespect to a lot of people, but the quality is not really there. I, some people, yes, but a lot of people don't really breed quality. They, they breed quantity. They want to get their dogs onto the track and fulfill their contracts or their numbers. And I have no disrespect for them people, you know, definitely not, definitely no disrespect. Anybody that breeds a greyhound, in my view, is, is a decent person because it takes a bit of work. And you have to be passionate for it. Because you have to put an awful lot of hours in and a lot, a lot of care and attention. And especially whenever you've had a winter like we've just had. It's always hard for the staff, for myself, to keep the dogs in good shape. So, can they not allow my dogs to run? And getting back to the welfare issue. Why is it a welfare issue? Well, obviously it's a welfare issue because... If you can't run the greyhounds, then they've been bred for no reason. So, let's look at how uh, the GBGB gets its licence. Obviously, it's a, a regulatory sort of organisation for greyhound racing. And in order to get that licence granted, they get it through UCAS which is a, governed, a government body. Now, I have went through the sort of, com uh, what would you call it, the, the, the proper due process. I have complained to the GBGB and the next step will be to wait for their answer and then I will take it up with UCAS 
I will be contacting Oliver Dowden, uh, the Minister of Sport, um, and I'll be trying a few other things as well. But the one thing that will really hurt is what I will do with social media. And that's one thing that really hurts in relation to ARC. So, where do I go from here? Well, I tried Doncaster last week. I read them an email. I phoned them a couple of times, but they don't seem that keen in coming back to me. And that's my next nearest track, which is probably about an hour and 25 minutes to get there. Then I tried Sheffield the other day. I'm probably sure a few of you have listened to the conversation. They're not taking any outside trainers. But then that exposes another fault. Another, what would you say, kicking the balls for anybody that's trying to make money as a non-attached trainer. Where do we go from here? I'm not going to keep this this vlog going for long. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of tidy it up now. It's, it says in the rules of racing, which I received a copy of prior to getting my license granted, that the authorised representative of a race course, a Greyhound race course, which is obviously authorised by the GBGB, must ensure that there is promotion of the sport, integrity, and that the welfare of the dogs must be looked after. And I'm pretty sure whenever we get to the barrister stage in court, then a few people are going to be embarrassed by the actions of somebody that knows how to use the law. But is that good enough one in that case? Would you want to go on to them courses with your dogs? Would you trust people at the track with your dogs? Because if they can say... Don't let him onto your track or ignore him if he tries to ring. Then what are they going to do behind closed doors? You just don't know because can you trust them? I don't think I could. And God knows what goes on and what would go on. And I would rather not run the dogs in that case. And it's a great shame. And really it breaks my heart. Because as any of you know... Whenever you breed a dog, whenever you whelp the litter, from the point they're in your hand and you're, you know, helping the mother to, like, get them out of their embryonic sac and, you know, cutting the umbilical or, you know, ripping the umbilical open, it's, it's some feeling whenever you get that dog to the track and it wins. And I think it's a feeling that anybody that's experienced it is just unbelievable. And it's something you never forget. And the bond that you have with that dog after it wins that race, whenever you've whelped that, brought him through and raced him and he's won, is absolutely amazing. And, and, and I know a lot of you will have experienced that. And... Is our sport gotten has our sport got integrity? It's questionable. So I need to do something about it. Greyhound racing to me means a lot more than a profit line. Greyhound racing for me is a sport where you can gamble on whether you've done your dog better than somebody else has done their dog and no matter what you say it's a gambling sport now I've heard of people like Kev Hutton and other people that don't bet or doesn't have a bet listen best of luck to you you know good luck to you but that's part of the big enjoyment of it for me and I've got to be honest I love it and I want to make sure that people in the future are going to have the same experiences as me. 
because I love I I love everything about the game. And the dogs, the dogs mean everything to me. They they really mean they really mean everything to me. I, everything in my house is greyhound, greyhound, greyhound. And I live with four. Um Sally, she's the big mama. And then I've got our two daughters from her first letter, which are Amy and Babsy, who's a bit of a character. And then you've got a little pup that was a runt, which couldn't really survive in the paddocks because she was like a third of the size of everything. She she actually still looks like a whippet now. But she tries her heart out to run with the other dogs, which is funny. So I'm going to try and do something and I'm going to try and... I'm going to try and do something to see if the sport... I'm going to try and do videos and things like that. But I'm going to attack these courses that really need to be attacked because they're not fit for our industry. And they're ruining our industry. I'll tell you what it's like. I, I thought about this actually the other day. And it's like the Irish potato famine and I had a lot of uh, great great uncles uh, maybe probably great 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 uncles that left Ireland luckily because of a plantation owner who paid for them to get a boat to Boston in America and they went on to have a generation of uh, McCool's in, in, in the USA and who we still keep contact with now and whenever the plantation owners the the landowners which were scottish and english gentry in ireland whenever the potato crop failed if you don't know anything about the potato blight that basically killed a, a lot of irish people what happened was they would they wouldn't really feed the people they would give them scraps and instead they sold the good crop what was left of the crop which was good which wasn't much they sold to England and overseas and left the Irish people with scraps they basically treated them like shit that's 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 the the truth of the matter but that was a different time but this is like what we're getting now but somehow the poor has got out of her, her hands and it's been given to the bookies and promoters. I don't know how that's happened, but it has happened. And what we've got now is, we're all living on scraps. We're all living on scraps. And the youngsters that are coming through, which are everything, they mean everything to this sport. There's no, there's no question, you have to have youth. You have to have people that are media savvy, social media savvy, definitely. Because they're the people that are going to save the industry. And there's nothing for them. There's no dream for them. There's no, there's no way that they're going to be able to make a life for themselves where they have a comfortable life and they've got dreams that they can, they can achieve. They're not going to be able to do that. And we'll talk more about that in my next vlog. We need to do something now. We have to do something. Or we'll forever regret it. Because these people will ruin this industry. And as God is my judge now, and I'm not a big believer in God, but if he's up there, if there's anybody up there, we need to sort this shit out. Because these people are taking us for fucking mugs. Let's sort it out. Let's do something. Let's stop them. Thanks. I'll speak to you next time. Good luck.